All right. Next, I am going to go back to um, doing a um, showing a simulation. In this case, um, that of the Milky Way. So this is the third time we've seen this. Um, this should be familiar now. And now we're going to see um, more stars. And so you um, see the bluish light versus the more greenish light. So the blue light corresponds to where stars are forming. The greenish light corresponds to just the gas. And here you can really see how um, you have tendrils of gas pulling in uh, from the gravity of the galaxy. And um, this is actually, you know, we see this in distant clusters um, where material um, has been pulled in from the extragalactic medium. And in here we just saw a, uh, a smaller galaxy collide and get absorbed by the Milky Way. And, um, <clears throat> and in addition to the blue, you also see hints of red. And of course, red and blue make purple, so you see lots of purple as well. And the purple represents the, um, the reddish stars, the older stars. So here, um, in this particular simulation, you can delineate or see the difference between the bluer, um, younger regions versus the redder regions, which are towards the core. And what's really interesting is that um, you really see how um, the space around the galaxy is full of these clumps of gas. Um, some of them could be the sizes of small galaxies, but um, over time they will um, collide and merge and build up the disk of the Milky Way. Here's a really big clump that's slowly um, coming in and it could merge um, in the future. So this again goes over billions of years um, of evolution of the galaxy. And um, during all these collisions, one thing I will point out is that um, stars um, are unlikely to ever collide with anything. Um, it turns out that the space in between stars is large enough that um, stars will slip right through each other. And, um, and gas clouds um, are distributed, um, but they're very thin. They're very close to be, being a vacuum. And so the stars will just um, move through um, the, the gas clouds. But um, even when we look at um, the Milky Way today, we find lots of very small satellite galaxies. And so today, even um, when we observe, um, we see hints of you know, galaxies or um, things that have um, condensed out of these gas clouds, um, which are in orbit around the Milky Way, and which we think will eventually merge uh, will collide and merge with the Milky Way. And one of them is known as the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. And so this is one of the closest um, galaxies to us. Um, it's about 70,000 light years away. And um, <clears throat> we've known about the Sagittarius core, um, the, the, the dwarf galaxy for a while, and people have been running simulations of it, um, trying to understand um, how um, it has evolved in its orbit. Um, but um, a paper just came out to show um, basically um, the best um, simulation so far of um, the Sagittarius um, Dwarf Galaxy. So here is the disk of our Milky Way. This is about 100,000 light years across. So the sun is about halfway from the center out to the edge of the disk. And it turns out that in addition to the, uh, the disk and the central bulge in the Milky Way, you can see the reddish stars there, um, the Milky Way is also surrounded by a really, um, um, a, a, what's known as the halo, um, which um, is a very um, not dense um, grouping of galaxies that have um, extremely large orbits around the center of the Milky Way. And the halo appears to be roughly um, spherical. And so the, um, the Sagittarius dwarf, along with many of the other small galaxies, are basically orbiting within the halo. And we, um, one speculation is that as these galaxies interact um, with the Milky Way, they create these tidal streams where um, stars um, are in orbit around the Milky Way, but the gravity from the disk slows down certain stars um, as they get close. And um, this causes the um, stars to stretch out in um, what are called tidal tails, both a leading tail as well as a trailing tail. And depending on you know, how many times this is orbited, um, you, know, you might be able to um, distinguish multiple loops um, from these tails. And so this particular um, simulation, again, came from um, this particular astronomer, um, Dierichs, um, along with uh, Abraham Loeb, both from Harvard. 
And here, um, they're running their simulation, and the simulation sh um, both shows the dark matter as well as the stars, and GC stands for Galactic Center. So the, um, trying to, let's run this again. But here is the um, core, and you can sort of follow it, but after a bit of time, it's, it starts becoming really difficult to follow just because um, the, the, both the leading tails and the trailing tails tend to mask uh, where um, the, the core of the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy is. All right, so here's a frame from the simulation. And what they've done is um, they've actually been able to plot the locations of stars that have been found in the halo. So the simulation extends out to about 200,000 um, parsecs. Um, so this is many, many times larger than the, um, than the size of the Milky Way. But um, we've been able to measure stars in the halo. These are some of the most distant stars that we've been able to find. And even though they don't exactly match this particular simulation, you can see that there's um, pretty good agreement along, at least in some of these places. So it seems like um, we have um, pretty good confirmation that um, the simulation is doing a good job of um, showing what, um, how this gravitational interaction between the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy and our galaxy has progressed over uh, a time period of about a couple billion years. So that's pretty exciting. And then in, in this case, um, this Sagittarius dwarf is right here, so that's really clear. <laughs>